Hi everybody, uh, it's been a while since I've posted, sorry about that. Something happened this last weekend that reminded me why I started posting on YouTube. It reminded me why I am writing a book um, that will be published this year, yay. Um, and it reminded me why I left in the first place. I was born and raised into the Jehovah's Witness organization and I was a Jehovah's Witness till I turned 30, 31. And I disassociated myself because I had a really big issue with child sex abuse. There's a problem within the organization that people don't want to admit. They will acknowledge it. They will you know, tiptoe around the subject and point you to magazine, you know, watchtower articles that say, oh, we have, you know, policies and guidelines and we protect our children and we abhor that. That's all fine and good. You can write as many articles as you want and you can go online and say you abhor it. But until you have policies in place to protect children, I'm not going to be okay and I won't be silenced about it. I was told that they didn't like my YouTube. They didn't like that I was speaking out publicly. I, that's my right. I have a right to speak out against something like this. And I am not shaming or pointing to any one particular person. I am not saying that all Jehovah's Witnesses are bad. I've never once said that. I am saying there is an issue within the policies. I'm saying there's an issue within the upper level management. <laughs> um, and the, the men who run the organization. There's an issue there that they won't admit to and they won't change they will again say they have reviewed policies and they've altered them and they protect children and they abhor and yada 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 we've heard it it's proven to be untrue they are not protecting children and in many cases they're lying about circumstances and cases and they're not being transparent and they're not letting individuals in the congregation know when there's an abuser sitting three seats down from them. You are, if, if I'm talking to a Jehovah's Witness right now, if you're active and you are going back to the Kingdom Halls in April, because I hear that they're returning to in-person meetings starting April, 2022. Everyone's going to be overjoyed and happy and et cetera, et cetera. You're also opening yourself up to dangerous people. Your children are going to be sitting in the same audience as potential abusers. Not every congregation, but there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And I know this because it happened to me. It happened to other people I know. And there's so many cases filed against the organization right now, lawsuits that proves this is an issue. All right, so on the subject of not being silenced, I already mentioned my issue is with the child sex abuse and their policies regarding it. Um, my other issues are regarding the secrecy behind that um and one of the biggest things because people want to say that the organization has they don't lie and there is no secret and we're just spreading apostate lies as one of the brothers said in the video in a video from jehovah's witnesses organization they said actually here i think i wrote it down Stephen Lett, 
member of the governing body is quoted saying, apostate-driven lies and dishonesties that Jehovah's organization is permissive towards pedophiles. It's hard to be lies when there's proof within the courts that show you guys do not turn over abusers to the authorities and you're not protecting those within the congregation. I have an example. In a 2011 lawsuit, I'm just going to leave out names, but I am going to put a link down below. In 2011 lawsuit, elders in the North Blank Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses took the stand to face questions about why they didn't report to police that one of their members, Blank, had confessed to sexually abusing his stepdaughter. Hmm. This story sounds familiar. Blank and Blank testified that they had brought together all of the congregation's elders and instructed them to watch Blank, that's the abuser, to watch Blank closely to make sure he did not abuse more children. Okay, so here they're on the stand. They're testifying that they told all the other elders within the congregation, this man abused his stepdaughter. Watch him. Make sure he doesn't do it again. All right. But in a series of 2013 letters to the Jehovah's Witness leaders, blank, who was an elder in the congregation in the 1990s when the abuse occurred, accused the three elders of lying under oath. Okay, so this other elder who was there when all this happened is now saying, whoa, that's a lie. And he is quoted saying, none of the other elders, including myself, were made aware that a child sexual predator was in our midst even though the offender was in my book study. Because of this, the congregation and our own families were unable to be adequately protected, resulting in catastrophic outcomes for other young girls and damage to my own family. These three brothers lied in court about this and much, much more. This same article that I'm going to link down below also mentions a May 1st, 1957 watchtower from Jehovah's Witnesses, and I printed off a copy here. So this is from Jehovah's Organization. May 1st, 1957 watchtower is quoted saying, today, God's servants are engaged in a warfare, a spiritual theocratic warfare, a warfare ordered by God against wicked spirit forces and against false teachings. God's servants are sent forth as sheep among wolves and therefore need to exercise the stream, extreme caution of serpents so as to protect properly the interests of God's kingdom committed to them. At all times, they must be very careful not to divulge any information to the enemy that he could use to hamper the preaching. They are told throughout this article, and there's more to it, that they first and foremost need to protect the organization and the preaching work, which means if that's falsifying information, if that's lying on the stand, if that means, uh, ugh, whatever that was, it's okay because that's part of theocratic warfare. If it looks bad for the organization, then let's just not tell the truth. I have so many issues with this and I will continue to shine light on it. I will continue to speak up and I'm going to do better at posting. I'm going to do better at focusing on certain articles. Um, there are other things that I'm 
I have issues with, but this was the reason why I left. And I wanted to make a point to respond and say that I will not be silenced. I will continue to speak up about this. Until it's fixed, more people need to speak up and more people need to fight for transparency and fight for the protection of those dear young ones.